Welcome back to Adobe Lightroom Classic. And today we're gonna to take a deep dive into adjusting color inside of the program. Now, there's two different ways to deal with color. One is obviously in the develop module here, going to be with the white balance color. And, and that's gonna be helpful a lot. But in the situations that I have today, we're gonna to be adjusting color when the color is not an accurate representation of what it should look like. And in that case, we're gonna be using something new. And in this case, it's the HSL color. It's not a color slider. And even if I was in Photoshop, I would be doing it in the same way where I would either be in either hue saturation or selective color. But today we're gonna to be taking a look at how to adjust color inside of Adobe Lightroom Classic. Now, for those of you who have not seen or used the HSL color that's located down here, this is something to get used to. It is actually helpful. However, I personally adjust color in Photoshop and it's for a very easy and simplistic reason. This works perfectly fine and exactly as it would in Photoshop. However, this is a global adjustment, meaning it applies it to the whole image. There is a very simplified version of this in the masking section, but it doesn't really work that good. It just does a little bit and it's not so effective. So you can use this global color adjustment if the color affects everything in the whole image, but if you need to affect just a certain area, it doesn't quite work so good. And that's where using Photoshop is definitely superior. But let's go ahead and take a look at this. So I use this photo a lot. And in this case, it's not for the hair selection tool, it's for the color. For some reason, whoever toned this did a horrible job or for some reason, they made her completely yellow. In a digital camera, it's not taking a red, green, and blue image on capture. It's taking basically a monochromatic capture and it's interpolating what it thinks the colors are. So sometimes, especially if your exposure is off, it gets the colors off at the same time. And what you need to do is shift the color either to make it more red or more green or more blue or more cyan. And you also have to adjust the saturation of the vibrance. So in this case, we have the wrong color, meaning this skin tone, there's no way she's this yellow. It needs to be more red. And Along with that, it is way oversaturated. So even if we do shift this to a more red, it's gonna have too much color. We need to lower the saturation of the yellow or the red or whatever color that may be to make it more normal looking. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to make everything look normal, but in this case, this is what we're gonna be after. So what we're gonna do is come down here and we're taking a look at these HSL colors and you'll notice that it comes in a couple of different modes. We can deal either where we just specifically look at the hue, which is the color of the color, and it's divided up here, the saturation of the colors, the luminance, which is the brightness value, which you wouldn't think you would adjust a lot, but a lot of times I'm increasing the brightness, I think that helps. Or you can go to all where it's doing everything at once. So you have the hue, the saturation, the luminance, all available in one window. And in this case, that is normally what I'm gonna be working with. I'm gonna go ahead and pick the all in this case. The configuration for this in Adobe Camera Raw is a little bit different. Actually, I like that one better because you can click on the individual colors and then it has the hue, saturation, and the luminance available as well. But let's go ahead and take a look at this image. So what is the problem color? And this is the easiest way to identify it. So the problem color is sort of a yellow or an orangish color in this image. Now, I can tell you right now, and it's easy to do, you can always go to your saturation, which is right here, and we can increase the saturation. If it starts to get neon, that's gonna show you how much of that color is. So there's some red in this, but not a lot, but watch orange. Yeah, there's a lot of orange. Let's try yellow, and there's a lot of yellow. So the main colors here are orange and yellow with a little bit of red. 
I'm going to double click on the red, the orange, and the yellow because it's easier for me to default set that back to zero. So those are the colors that we need to work on. I can tell you that we're going to work with the orange and the yellow first. So if you look at the sliders, if we go this way, it's going to make it more yellow. If we go this way, it's going to make it more red. In this image, we want to shift the yellow towards red. And when you do this, you're not going to do a huge shift. It's not going to look good. These are very minute adjustments, usually no more than plus or minus four that I'm ever adjusting anything. If you go much farther than that, it's not going to look so good. We've taken the orange and we've shifted that towards the red, and then we're going to take the yellow and shift that towards the red. Now the problem is, even though I'm shifting this and making it more red, you can still see in these areas, especially the shadows, it's way oversaturated. It just does not look normal. There's nobody that has a skin tone like this. We also, in combination with this adjustment, want to adjust these. And I can tell you right now, we're not going to be going down that, that far. So we're going to take the orange and you can see how this makes a huge difference. Obviously, if you go too far, it's going to make her almost completely black and white, showing that this is loaded with orange. So we're going to just lower that until where we think it looks good. And we're going to do a little yellow. We might have to add some back. And I think I'm going to take some more yellow out. That's looking a whole lot better. Now she looks a little bit red, so I can take my yellow and move it back towards yellow a little bit. So it just may be a little bit closer to that. It's still a little super saturated here, but it's looking better in the face. And we've probably lost a little too much color here. This is why I say Photoshop is better because in Photoshop, you can make a mask and isolate it to a specific area. In Lightroom, you can kind of do it, but not really. And what I'll do is I'll show you what I mean. So let's go ahead and reset all these. Hit reset down here actually. And we're going to go and make a selection. And in this case, we'll just do a brush selection because I think it's going to be the simplest way to show what's going on. So I'm going to make this brush big and we're going to go ahead and just select the skin parts out. We're not going to do our hair. All right. So that's pretty good. Now, what we do is we slide down here and you'll notice there's this hue adjustment and there's a saturation adjustment. But notice you can't isolate it to a specific color. All I can do is make it more one way or more another way. So in this case, I'm going to use the fine adjustment slider because I need it to be a little bit more exact. So I'm going to slide this towards the red. So I just want to go this way towards the red a little bit. And then I'm going to take that saturation and desaturate it. And you can see that's doing okay job, but it's really yellow right here. And I can't isolate those specific colors. I'm just doing all the colors are getting adjusted at the same time. So it's making some better and some worse. And because of that, I don't think it really works that great. There's occasions or times where I will use this, but in general, it's not the most effective tool because it doesn't have enough selectability as far as going into each specific color. So in this case, we're going to just delete all those masks and go back to the beginning. We'll click this and we're back to where we started. All right, so in our, our next option here, we've got this rose. And what happens is you over or underexpose or just reds and oranges in general. The camera has a really difficult time getting an, an accurate representation of what the color should look like. And you kind of get these pinkish or neon hues in there. So we've got some nice deep reds in the shadows, but notice the highlights have this pinkish color. And this is not a perfect place to adjust it, but we're going to do the best we can. So, well, we know what is the color? Well, the color is going to be red, right? So as I shift this, notice I can really shift that red. Now, if I was really being precise, I really only want to shift these pinkish colors, but that's not really so accessible here. We can see if we have any magenta. So if I kick this magenta up where it looks like there could be some magenta, it's really very spotty. Most of this color is going to be red. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust this and I can shift the color of the red so I can get it more accurate. If I want to add some yellow, I'm going to go to the right. If I want to make the red more red, I can go to the left. Now I can do that in the oranges. And if I want to see if there's oranges, remember the really simple way is to just boost the saturation. And yes, there's some oranges in there. And are there some yellows? A little teeny tiny bit. Mostly red and orange. 
So what we can do if we want to make it more red is we can take and go to the left to make everything more red. And then what we can do is we can come in to the saturation levels of those. And if I make it less saturated, it's going to get rid of some of the neon. You don't want to get rid of it all or it's going to become too flat and gray and not look realistic at all. But you can maybe go out like a minus one or minus two to help get rid of some of the neon color that we see in there. The last option you would have is your luminance value. So you can make the color more bright or the color more dark by shifting that. So if you want to make it a little bit darker red or a brighter red, you can shift it. And what we're really doing here and we can click on this button here to see the differences. We're just shifting and changing the color. We're going to start off like this. This was it in the beginning, and this is it with the changes. And so you can shift those colors around. It becomes more difficult when you have reds and oranges because they're going to work differently. But just like in the reds, a lot of times you'll get a color and well, this looks okay. Maybe it realistically was more with a little more yellow or a little more red. That's the more accurate representation of what this should look like. I don't know in this situation, I'm just saying, this is where shifting the colors makes sense. If you're finding the information in any of these videos helpful, if you could please give me a thumbs up, that would be wonderful. If you would like to subscribe and get future videos as they come up, because I'm gonna be doing a whole series on Lightroom right here, that would be great as well. The last one we're gonna take a look at, and this is something that happens all the time. And occasionally you can do this in Lightroom, but more often than not, I think Photoshop is better because it's a very specific area that you wanna do this. In blacks, whether it's asphalt, solid blacks, you tend to get a cool color temperature, which is a cyan and a blue. And obviously this is a neutral black. Everybody's seen asphalt, it's black. It doesn't have this color temperature. Because we're picking this warm sunlight and this is in the shade, it's, be it's becoming cool. It's the wrong white balance or color temperature down here. So what we need to do is suck the blue and cyans out. Now we can't use the masking option because remember it just does all the colors. So it would suck the yellow out and anything else. We don't want to do that. In this case, we're going to be pretty much okay because there's no cyans in this image. If there were cyans for like someone wearing a shirt, it's not going to work so good. But because in this situation, that's really the only blue or cyan, we should be good. This one's simple. We're just going to come down here to the blues. So in this case, it's aqua. So we're going to suck some aqua out. And usually I do about 75% of them. So we'll just come down here and we'll suck out about 70%. And you can see We've made this more of a neutral color. Once again, I can turn this off. That's what it looked like before and doing this here. And that's how you use HS color to shift, desaturate or saturate or change the brightness of color inside of Lightroom. Remember, it is the second step after you do the white balance. Do your white balance first. And then if you have some underlying color issues, then you wanna fix them. Or you have an image that's already been white balanced in the case like that we have here where it's been toned and someone just didn't do it accurately. You need to kind of shift those colors around to make them more accurate. That's it for this video. The cool thing is Lightroom Photoshop just got updated. So we're gonna have some major updates in the programs. You're gonna to have to give me a couple days to find out what they actually are. And then I should have some new videos on the new update to Adobe Lightroom Classic. We do have a Facebook group and there's a very specific reason I created this. If you want the information, it's in the description below. But a lot of comments I get, people are asking me questions and I cannot help them because I need to see what the issue is. Facebook allows you to either post an image or a video, and it makes it really easy for me to give you the answer to whatever your problem is. 